Actually, starting at the Barcelona Olympics, I was asked to do an underwater camera that chased the swimmers, which turned out to be Moby Cam. And our style is to do things that are as simple and light as possible, not high-tech stuff. That actually ended up being driven by a crank from the sidelines and was a very tough, rugged, little, great little guy, you know, a little submarine that ran black submarine on the black lane line so the swimmers didn't even see it. I actually drove it myself in Barcelona, uh, 19 miles by my account. And then uh, that was a hit, so in Atlanta they asked me to do four sky cams, which brought that back, and 12 things that we ended up calling go cam, were, which were all of these objects are like study cam. They're balanced, equipoised, very carefully balanced objects, so they're inherently stable when you move them on gimbals. The go cam is a little object balanced on a single monorail that is self-powered and goes 28 miles an hour. We built 12 of those, some of them going vertically up a pole with a counterweight, some running here and there. And uh, we were asked by NBC to do the dive cam, which is another object that needed to be really simple. They needed a shot that drops with the divers. And in several of these cases, other companies from other countries had been hired to do it and had failed, but had spent most of the dough, unfortunately. So we had to do it you know, cheaply and simply and quick. We had three months. And um, I love a challenge like that because you, you have to get a lot of odd different things right right out of the box. You have one chance. For example, it can't look grotesque because people will hate it. The, the look people will hate it. It can't be noisy because the divers would be irritated. It can't be too big because et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It can't make a splash. It can't make a sound, it, you know. And so it was clear that since divers fall by the acceleration of gravity, and Galileo proved that everything, you know, from a BB to a cannonball falls at the same speed, disregarding air resistance. Let's just haul up a camera in a tube, tube that's sealed so it can go right down below the water, and drop it when the dri diver drops and let it fall and just stop it with a bungee cord and a one-way pulley so it just stops. You know? And that's how it worked. Um, the only tough part of it was we had a special tube extruded and, you know, um, Lexan window and the whole business. I ended up having to dust the window every day to keep the dust off. And it worked like a charm. And the, the whole tube panned left and right to keep the diver in frame and the camera tilted by remote control as it fell. So the guy with a joystick is turning a 700 pound tube when he goes like this and tilting a one pound falling object when he goes like this. And it was very bold and worked great. Flycam was a, a evolution from the go cam because it, it's hard to keep 300 feet of rail dead straight in grass. Grass grows overnight and kept moving my rails. So it became clear that a really taut line with a light object might even be better. So we now do, the fly cam has evolved. In fact, a temple grad is in charge of fly cam, owns them and is my licensee. And he has, you know, five high def ones or so. And the thing goes 70 miles an hour, you know, and it's just like a little study cam on a wire, you know, with little tiny motors filling in for your fingers. It weighs all of 38 pounds, which I like. I like these things light and fast and so on.